Probably Victor. No, not me. <laughs> he's like painted himself into a corner, but he's used a beautiful color. Yeah. You're like, whatever. Yeah. You just throw the phone out. <laughs> Tell me about your rock and roll. Oh, Tell me about yeah. your rock and roll. <laughs> This one. She's awful. She's terrible. Can you confirm? <laughs> she can either deny or confirm. I'm a busy woman. <laughs> <laughs> Maxim's pretty horrible at replying. Uh. At least to me, maybe he just doesn't like me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's not true, but yeah. You're like, whatever, yeah. you just throw the phone out. <laughs> Two blue ticks immediately. I'll then... take that off. I'll take that <laughs> blue tick thing is a big problem. Yeah. You, can, you, you can take it off. You know. When my wife and I were first dating, I didn't know that on WhatsApp they could tell that if you read it. So I'd read it and be like, mm -hmm. <laughs> Not that I Have you changed is... that setting though? You can change oh, it. She'll know. change it right back. She, she has <laughs> no problems with it. Oh, why? What? 100%. Oh, do you remember yeah. that? Do you remember oh, that? Oh, oh, why? I'd say, oh, why? Is that yeah. he, he has a, a, a great sense of humor and a playful nature that I think lends itself to um, possibly backing himself into a corner. <laughs> he's like painted himself into a corner, but he's used a beautiful color. I, it, I, I feel how I'm yeah. I actually know that Lloyd. I was going to say Lloyd. <laughs> really? I was going to say Lloyd. It's Lloyd. He's, I think he has forgotten his lines on set I think set that's why he's got such a resonant voice. Oh. <laughs> He also, the little trick about Lloyd, he carries his all his lines in his sleeve. And one time we were doing a scene, and we were doing this, this scene on, uh, in Numenor, and, and he gesticulates towards me, and I just get hit um, with, with, with something that just falls onto the ground, but he continues acting. And I was like, mate, what's, what, what is this on the floor? And he's like, oh, those are my lines. And he stops them back into his sleeve. Tell me about your rock and roll. Oh, yeah. your rock and roll. No, I, had, I had one line at the end of, at the end of a scene. And I might have been the funniest moment. I, 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 yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. Mark Heller. Mark Heller. She doesn't know the concept of time. She's a nightmare. I love her <laughs> so dearly. Her timekeeping. The yeah. thing is with Mark Heller, you need to tell her to be somewhere 15 minutes before she actually That's it. At, at, at minimum. Yeah, yeah. At minimum. Yeah. Yeah. Tell her a half an hour before we're going to get there, and she'll be <laughs> a little late. I, I have fallen asleep. Okay, set, we did take. a scene. We did a scene, and you did fall asleep. Tyro. Tyro, yeah, he would fall asleep. He's, yeah, he's, he's growing. He's a growing he's boy. A he needs his rest. Yeah. Tyro slept, has been sleeping a lot. I mean, he's a teenager, isn't he? So Tyro. Kind of Should we go with Tyro? Tyro's, Tyro's a sleeper. Sleep. Yeah. Should we go, we're going go with Tyro. Tyro. <laughs> I'm going to say Maxim. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes! Well, Maxim posted a picture of himself riding a horse or something. He was like, this is a cool stunt I'm doing. He's like, Max! <laughs> Maxim, I was in a room and he leaked a, a big spoiler. We all went, Max. Really? Yeah, your turn. We no. Like, but really? they cut it out the interview. We watched it. <laughs> <laughs> I think Lenny Henry did an interview. Oh, God. Yeah, before. Lenny just straight up like, well. And, and I think Amazon after that, I think they was, you know, we, we, we all got some renewed um, yeah, rules. Now remember, guys. Yes, now come on. No, not me! <laughs> <laughs> I say wrong! <laughs> no, not me! I mean, you always had a cup of tea. I always had a coffee. But he always coffee had some tea. candy as well. Yeah, oh, I, you're, yes. you're I remember I always had that smoothie. Ismael with all his protein I, I, and Charlie and his I would say Charlie. Ben Walker, because he used to be a paramedic, or whatever paramedics are. Good chance. That's good, I'll go with Ben. Lloyd Owen would be very good. He'd, yeah, he'd be very loud, he's very commanding. <laughs> Daniel Wayman might be quite good at um, ordering your mind. So yeah, just staying to, on. Hang on, just take take a step back. Take deep breaths. Yeah, you are bleeding to death. It's gonna be fine. Sort it out. Ben does know a lot of first aid. Sure. Ben does. Have, if you have yeah, a few, a few scratches, day. he'd be there quickly to patch you up and chuck you back in <laughs> to, <laughs> your, uh, to your demise. You die faster if you panic. <laughs> Megan and Sophia Tide. Uh,
Make there's it. a lot of pipes here. Yeah, I mean, I mean, like there's. Oh, this, we've this, we've this, got an organ here. Yeah, but it's a thing in it. Like Megan, like Me, you, Megan sings Constantly. more than you. Yeah, I don't. I I Megan. Sophia's voice is blow you away. Ben Walker. What well, thanks? <laughs> oh, and Arthur. Yeah, oh, it's very very funny. Sophia. I mean, Sophia. Sophia. Yeah. Sophia. The orcs actually are hilarious. Yeah. The orcs, yeah. 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 Oh, wine cracks a good gag, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wine. Oh, wine. Oh, wine. Well, all of us. No, oh, wine. <laughs> I am the clown. I am a clown. Congratulations on the show. Thank you. But like, my, my first like instinctive question is like, how does it feel to be a part of like the Lord of the Rings world? Um, like cool. a dream come true. Yeah. I was a massive fan of the films. My dad read the books to me when I was young, so it's kind of, it, I still can't believe it. We've been pinching ourselves for three years, I'd say. Yeah. Feels amazing. It's yeah. just, we feel so welcomed, I think. Yeah. It, mm, as in, the showrunners were so welcoming and the crew was so welcoming and we all kind of bonded and we just kind of approached it. Like, well, at least I just approached it like kind of any other role, just grateful to be a part of it. Just to think that we're a part of the world is pretty, yeah. it's overwhelming, I think, a bit. at this stage, for me at least. Yeah, I feel good. It's sort of unexplainable. <laughs> like, I don't really know how. It's really I unfortunate feel. that word, because no, no. you're going to have to explain it all day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's so true. Like nine hours yeah. of junketing to explain. You, oh. Thanks. But I know what you mean. Yeah. It's, it's weird, isn't it? You're right. It's arriving, like overwhelming and but It's not brilliant. just any old job. This is like a major thing. Yeah. It's, uh, just a case in point, drove around Piccadilly Circus and looked up and mm. where it usually says Coca-Cola or jeans or something, it was the rings of power. And kind of like, ah, this is us. Yeah. It's so exciting. Yeah. It's exciting to be part of Seeing that as well behind you as yeah. well. Yeah. yeah, it's beautiful. How did it feel the first time you walked on set? Um, I, the first time I walked on set, used one of my waking people up in Britain in the middle of the night calls. Ah, yes. Because I was just totally overwhelmed. And the first time I got on set, it was filming um, a scene on top of a mountain with lots of snow. And what they'd done is fill a studio with snow, but there was nothing else in it. So I could see all the crew, and I hadn't appreciated that there'd be hundreds of people Aww. watching. It. I'd been used to kind of filming something with... 15 of us in a, in a living room. Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, it felt, from the very first moment, it felt it felt huge. Yeah. My first experience on set was, I wasn't actually filming, I was just doing a set visit. Yeah. And I went to go and see the Harfoot encampment. And it was in this farm that had a forest in the middle of it. And um, it was all, you know, the set was decorated and everything. But what was even more incredible than that already was our background artists were in the middle of doing like a movement um, piece that they'd been working mm. on. And so they were in costume, they were in makeup, and they were just living their half foot lives. Yeah. Mm. And it was incredible to be able to walk onto a literal, a live set. Yeah. And I was like, you just That's fall really into it. Yeah, it's yeah. beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. The, the, the preparation that had gone into it, you know, we walked in and we saw the carts where the half foots live, and we saw the where, where we eat and where we yeah. go and look for berries and, and all the, the forest all around us and where the river was. And, and suddenly all the people come on board and they're, and they're, they're a motley crew of people. Some of them are singers, some of them are dancers, yeah. some of them are kind of just, some of them weren't even involved in the show, they just wandered in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure there were a couple, there's one guy who just kept barking in the middle of scenes when he wasn't supposed to. Oh yeah, to. oh yeah. That. We're in the middle of a really That's serious so scene and this guy just started going, arr, arr, arr. <laughs> We don't know was why. Was that in the script? That. No, yeah. no, no, it wasn't. It was just, Absolutely not. <laughs> It's a beautifully rendered world. Yeah. Our world is very different from Numenor, very different from everywhere else. Um, but we felt kind of at home when we got on there, didn't we? Yeah. I had a similar experience. I was on the on the raft, right. um, so in the middle of this water tank. But again, you you look out. We're filming this way, but you have the whole crew there on yeah. the edge of the tank. Mm -hmm. So I I remember feeling quite overwhelmed. And luckily, it was a very physical scene. So. Yeah. You could sort of dissipate all your end, all the adrenaline into yeah. the action of what you were doing. Intense rowing. I was yeah. rowing <laughs> so far. So I was going to ask about that scene because I was curious, but I wasn't sure how dumb the question was going to be. But like yeah. the practicality of filming that, obviously you're out in New Zealand and that. Yeah. Did you didn't go out into like the European Ocean? No, to shoot no, we all. did it. We were in a massive tank. Um, there was a film called The Meg, The Megalodon. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jason Statham. So we used that tank. Um, <laughs> we were the next people in. We had Jason Statham and then us. <laughs> um, and uh, it was a huge water tank and then they just CGI'd the horizon. But right. the, the stuff of what you see in the, 
immediate vicinity is all practical effects. Eleni, um, I think you probably wouldn't remember this. Three years ago, I used to go to Birmingham City University. Um, I'm a chancellor of Birmingham chancellor, City. That's, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> um, so that's why I know as a, for a fact that diversity in media is like something that you're really passionate about. When you first found out that I guess Lord of the Rings is now going to be much more inclusive to different, uh, well, it's you know, focusing on like the female characters as well as the men. It's got more people of colour just all around the world. How did it feel when you first found out they were doing I, that? I felt joyous. Um, when I arrived and saw what was going on, um, I thought this is this is going to be great. We're in New Zealand, so there are people, Maori people working behind the cam cameras, there are people of colour in scenes, and I thought this is going to be great. Sophia, and I just thought, yeah, Ishmael, okay, women kicking butt, yeah. yes, bring it on. So yeah, good. I'm big on inclusivity, inclusivity, and I felt that this was a 21st century rendering of a myth and legend as old as time. So good. It's about right. time, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So Morfid, with your with you know Galadriel, mm -hmm. you're one of the, one of if not the only character that like has existed in the Lord of the Rings franchise before. Obviously, it was played by uh, Kate Blanchett before. Yes. How does it feel, kind of taking on carrying on the name? A ridiculous at times, <laughs> um, but I I when I first found out I was playing Galadriel, I couldn't believe it, and it wasn't I think until I had the final costume and hair and makeup fitting. And that's when I was like, oh, I can see now. Um, so it was very much, I felt, you were part of just a huge group of people making this character. Um, and yeah, in terms of playing a character that, I still can't believe that m my name and Kate Blanchett's name are still in the same state. Like, Incredible. Sentence. Right? That's still really, <laughs> really weird. But I'd like to be able to know where your character is going yeah. and to have also kind of loved those films and kind of recited them. It felt like kind of 20 years of, of training. That's incredible. Yeah. Have you spoken to Kate? Like this is Kate. Uh, no, I haven't. I just let her go on with her. It's gonna happen. <laughs> Kate Blanchett. Surely. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>